Hello everyone. I want to make a quick little sort of heart-to-heart -heart casual chat video if that's all right. And I want to talk about words. Words and how powerful they are and how reckless we are with them and and how we should be with words as those who reflect Jesus. Now, recently I have been getting some comments that are hurtful and I'm not going to call anyone out or say specifically what people wrote but they're just mean <laughs> they're mean and they hurt my feelings and I know I'm not alone in this and that I can guarantee every single one watching this video you have experienced hurt from someone's words and it's just really amazing how something so small is actually so big and something that we can't even see can drastically affect everything around us and our own selves. How we see ourselves, how our moods are, what we do, how we treat others, what we believe. I mean, words are just like this huge foundation in life. And it really makes sense when you put into the perspective that that is how God created everything. He spoke. Words are powerful. Now, the Bible is now the Bible is full of wisdom talking about words, talking about the tongue. Um, it gives both parables and um, proverbs as well as actual experiences between actual people and King David is someone who comes to mind because he went through so much persecution and struggle in his life and it seemed that every time he was going to the next level in his life as ordained by God, he had a new enemy who would come at him with slander and lies and deceit and they would even um, trick the people around King David and get them to turn against King David by telling lies. And the Psalms are full of David crying out to the Lord and speaking of all of these people who slandered him. And he knew they were lies and he knew the Lord knew they were lies. But instead of dwelling on it, being stuck in that and letting their words control his life and what happened to him or what he believed about himself, he cried out to the Lord and asked the Lord to step in for him and affirmed that it was God's words that he believed and it was God's view of him that he believed. And we are to do the same. Now, that is a whole lot easier said than done because words are seeds. They get stuck in our heads and they repeat over and over and it seems that the negative ones are the ones we remember the most. They're the ones that frequent our minds the most and always pop up when we need confidence and when we need to have peace and to be sure of what we're doing. It seems that's when they always pop up, right? Of course, that's the enemy and that's how he works. But they still affect us. With the increase in communication and how easy it is to speak to anyone or about anyone from anywhere, we're getting an increase of reckless words, an increase of hate words, an increase of insults. And people simply don't care. They don't care what their words are really doing. And we expect this from the world. We know they are lost and in darkness and they don't understand they are to speak life and they don't understand how powerful words are. And they don't walk in this supernatural love for other people that we Christians do. But what, what I'm here to address is the church. I'm here to address us Christians who talk like the world. We slander each other. We gossip about each other, we insult each other recklessly. 
with abandon. We have no fear of our words. We have no consideration of our words. We're just out to speak our peace and have total disregard for what it's doing to the other person. So I just want to know, like, why do we do this? Why do we, why do we hurt each other with our words? Why do we say curses at our fellow Christians so frequently? Why do we gossip so much? Why do we slander so much? Why do we post assumptions about someone so much? I'm not saying I never do it. I mean, I have never commented. I've never posted a comment discouraging someone or insulting them. I just haven't and I wouldn't do that. But I've said things to people and I say things in my life, in my daily life that just kind of come out sometimes, you know. But why do we make that conscious effort and conscious decision to tear down someone, especially someone else of the faith? Someone else who is a believer in Jesus. Someone else who's born again and we're going to spend eternity in heaven with them. Why are we backlashing? Why are we backbiting? Why are we tearing each other down? We're supposed to be an example of Jesus. And Jesus didn't tear people down. Yes, he rebuked Pharisees and rebuked Peter at times. And if someone was out of line, he rebuked them. But he didn't go beyond that and he didn't set out to insult someone because an insult is never in love and when Jesus rebuked it was always in love. <sighs> We're supposed to be like him you guys. We're supposed to show the world what the love of Jesus looks like. That unconditional accepting love. And how is that reflecting that kind of love when we talk about each other the way we do, when we attack each other the way we do? We have to stop. And like, when you look at Paul's letters in the New Testament, so much of it has to deal, so much of it, so much of it is dealing with church members hurting each other, gossiping. Forming little cliques, turning on each other, backbiting, lying, slandering. Why is this so prevalent in the church? And I ask you, if you were not a believer, if you were not a Christian, you were not in the church, you didn't know who Jesus was, what he was about, anything about the Bible, and you just heard someone who you knew were a Christian, they said they were a Christian, and then you heard them talking about someone else, and just, you know, up and down, tearing them apart. What would your impression of Jesus be? Would you want to be a part of that? Would you want to join Christianity? No, you wouldn't. You think, well, that's not any different than everybody else. You think, well, where is that love and acceptance and grace and mercy that I hear about? We have to be careful with our words. The tongue is an evil and it is so hard to tame, but it doesn't mean we don't try and it doesn't give us the right to be reckless with our words. God gave us the power of life and death in the tongue. He gave us the power to encourage or discourage, to build up or to destroy fellow human beings with our words. He cares about the words we use whether we say them to the person's face, whether we are talking about them behind their back, or whether we're posting comments online. It all matters to him, and he sees it all. Please, be more vigilant with yourself. If you have a complaint against someone, take it to the Lord. Don't spread it all over the internet. Don't spread it in your church. That's just poison, and that's just a trap from the enemy. Don't fall for it. Please, please, please be careful with the words that you speak. Thank you for watching, and I really hope, I really hope.
hope that you take this advice. <sighs> okay, that's all I've had to say. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.